Uh, Neisseria, Neisseria gonorrhea, and Neisseria meningitidis are tricky to sequence because they contain a lot of repeats and a lot of biological variation happens within the species, both between strains and actually within a strain as it's growing. So these repeats make sequencing quite difficult to get across them, to, to align them, to understand what's happening with them in a biological context. We have homopolymeric tracts, some of which are quite long. They can be up to 20 bases or more. Uh, we have tandem repeats, repeats um, intergenic and within genes that are homopolymers and tandem repeats, and there are also repeated sequences, so sequences of the genome that are present several times scattered around the genome. What we are seeing from the ion torrent PGM data that we've been analyzing, which is actually from the first kits with 100 base pair kits, is that we can see sequence of the genome and then into the homopolymer and out the other side of the homopolymer in, into the genome. And what we see is, is sequence from both strands. So you can compare the number of C's or G's on one strand to the number on the other strand. And with the depth of sequencing, what we're seeing is different lengths of those C's and G's but we know biologically that that's what should be happening, that we expect to see these things changing. In the PIL-C gene in Neisseria gonorrhea, that's involved in the on-off switching of pili on the surface of the bacteria, which is very important for avoiding the immune system. That's been experimentally shown for many, many years to be happening and to be mediated by the changes in the homopolymeric repeats. And we can actually see this in the next generation sequencing data from the ion PGM. Long reads are really going to help our analysis because we have, in addition to the homopolymeric tracts, we have tandem repeats, some tandem repeats involved in phase variation of the OPA proteins, which are on-off expressed on the surface of the bacteria and are involved in close adhesion to host cells. Those pentamers can be present 7, 8, 20 times in, in a pentameric repeat. And we find that with shorter reads, it's quite difficult to get those reads to, to align properly. We need to have enough of the genomic context on one side and then the other side of a repeat to be able to work out the copy number of those repeats. So when we go to 300 base pair or 400 base pair reads on the PGM, that will resolve more easily. We also have Correa repeat enclosed elements in the genome. And these are 69 to 155 base pair elements they're present 100 to 200 times in the nice serial genomes, and they quite often make it difficult to get a final assembly or to get the context of where these repeats are. Their locations vary um, according to different strains and different species, and they look to be very important in, and involved in transcription and translation and lots of the biological functions of the organism as well. So we've recently shown, using the ion PGM for the first time, we've shown that there's been an inversion of the Correa repeat enclosed elements. So these elements contain promoter regions, they contain RNA processing sites, and they possibly um, are involved in, in a great deal to do with transcription of, of surrounding genes. And what we've shown from the PGM data is we have read data that matches with the reference sequence, the reference genome. And what we also have is some read data that shows that these elements have specifically inverted. So we can see, looking at the read data, we have the, the genomic context, we have a 26 pair base pair inverted repeat on either side of the repeat, but then a characteristic directional core region. And we can see that that has inverted. So the whole feature has inverted itself, which hasn't been previously shown as only capable because we were doing this on the PGM. The PGM is really easy to set up and really easy to use. I went to a few days training in Darmstadt and then came back and used my own machine. But actually, a couple of students used the machine and I helped direct them. So the first two people to use our machine at Kingston University were an undergraduate student doing an internship in the summer between her second and third year, and a master's student doing a 10-week project in the lab. So they ran the first two chips on our PGM, and the results were, were outstanding, and we're still using that data. Different students are using it to analyze different features of the sequences. So most of the time when our machine is being run, it's being run by students, undergraduate students, postgraduate students, and occasionally a PhD student.